Hello everyone, I'm Amos Central and welcome to episode 45 of Talking Buses. Yes, every time we say this number, it does get incredibly scary how many episodes of the show we've done. So thank you all so much for your support and thank you for those of you that bared with me last week and um, where the episode was missing. I did put an, an extra video in um, to cover for Talking Buses last week um, and it was missing. Unfortunately, I wasn't well enough um, to record it and edit it all together. Um, but hopefully... Um, now back, back on an every two weeks from now, um, with a, a pretty solid um, video plan up until Christmas and the end of the year. So hopefully, without further ado, we will crack on with this episode. So I will go straight into the national industry news that this week is being presented by Edward Fowler from the Edward Fowler Show. Thank you so much, Alex. It's great to be back here on Talking Buses once again. I'm here to present the national industry news. Starting off overseas and first group have announced the sale of a big 1,300 vehicle Greyhound coach operation to Flix Mobility who operate the quickly growing Flix bus brand. The sale of this operation which includes 2,400 staff is the last of first group's international subsidies with the main focus now being on the UK market. Once this sale has been taken place, it will make Flixbus one of the biggest coach operations in the US. Back in the UK and the climate change political summit, referred to COP26, is currently taking place in Glasgow. That will affect the future of bus operation for the event itself. First, Glasgow have been tasked with providing a shuttle buses on which they are using brand new BYD E200 EV single deck buses. The commencing of COP26 had already influenced bus operation around the UK with the new West Yorkshire Mayor announcing free bus travel uh, on Sunday the 31st of October for all customers in a plan to try and encourage people to try out the vast bus network in the area or in the region depending on how you want to take that in. Uh, returning back to Scotland and stagecoach in Inverse to, are set to trial the Cation Hydrogen single deck bus on some of their local services in the area. This vehicle has Previously spent time in London with a bellow, now operating similar vehicles on the C10 service. That is all of your national industry news for this episode of Talking Buses. I will now hand it back over to the host, Alex. So thank you for that, Edward. And it's going to be very exciting to see how the climate change meeting does affect the bus networks, not just in the UK, but overseas as well. Now we're moving over to the network news that this week has been presented by Gaz Doncaster. Hi, everyone. I'm Gaz Doncaster. And this week I'm presenting for you the network news. Returning back to COP26 and with the summit taking place in Glasgow, Switch Mobility has sent their Metro Decker and Metro City EV demonstrator products on loan for operation on the 398 service that connects the bus and rail stations in the city. First South Yorkshire have announced some service changes to take place within Sheffield to allow the smoother running of bus routes. This includes the reduction of service 76A to operate just between the city centre and Shonset Wood on an hourly frequency. Alongside this, the busy Chapel Town to Herdings corridor is to be simplified with the 11 and 11A service replaced by the hourly 1A that will be positioned to operate alongside the competing 1 service by Stagecoach. And finally, in West Yorkshire, the long-established 205 bus route between Pudsey, Morley and Dewsbury has had a change of operator with TLC Travel taking over the service from Arriva, Yorkshire. This change initially sees a reduced timetable due to staff shortages. However, this will expand shortly, working alongside the new extension of the route in Pudsey to serve the Alco Shopping Centre. That's this week's Network News. I'm Gaz Doncaster. Back to Alex in the studio. So that's all for part one of episode 45 of Talking Buses. Join us in part two as I go through all of your local fleet news, the simulation sections, very exciting progress across all of the simulators. 
we go through the weekly or the, the every two weekly now um, photo competition again some incredible entries this week the tracking buses that should be quite an exciting location and the back seat so don't miss it join us in part two for all of that So welcome to part two of episode 45 of Talking Bosses with me and Mar Central. We're now moving on to the local fleet news and the usual reminder that comes with every single episode that in the description below there is a Google format local fleet news. So if you have any local changes, be them transfers, repaints, withdrawals or new buses arrive, fill out that Google form in the description below. You can also now post a photo with it as well if you do have a photo of the vehicles in question, the vehicle or vehicles in question, you can post that as well and your news will feature in a future episode. So without further ado, we're moving over to Stagecoach in Merseyside. Merseyside, that's the one, yeah, so I said Merseyside and then mixed it with another word. But Merseyside and South Lancashire, where 36820 has transferred from Rock Ferry to Gilmos with environment of 300s, 272712 that have transferred from Rock Ferry to Chester, meaning that sister vehicle 27255 is now the only gold spec E300 at Rock Ferry Depot. Scania E400s 158525 old VX62 regged have transferred into Stagecoach Merseyside fleet from Gloucester Depot. Thank you to Bus Mad Person for the information. We now move over to Preston Bus, just further north, where their street deck HEV has been put into the Preston Bus 2020 livery. Alongside 40715, and that is the demo vehicle that's been painted alongside this. Arrivals are X First Group B7 RLEs that transferred from Diamond Bus North West that they purchased from First Group. That are 69178, or yeah, 69178, 69165, 56, 4946, 66930, 66918, 66907, and 05. That are all now in the Preston Bus 2020 livery. On loan as well, it is 208. 80 that is a Opte Solo SR and Diamond Bus Old 40735 has been repainted that's an MX20 um Opte moving on so yeah and 20185 that are um, these are street lights I believe street light middies 20187 20188 and 20189 that are BX70 plates street lights are currently on loan to Preston Bus in plain white with stickers on the side Thank you to Ryan Hack for the information. So now going over to Go North East. It wouldn't be an episode of Talking Buses without a Go North East influence. Um, and Go North East have, re have yet another two demo vehicles that are numbered 9049 MV21 BUS and 9050 SK68 TXN. Um, these are, um, so 9049 is based at Riverside and 50 is based at House Hill. Alongside this, um, Gone Off these 6923, 4, 6, 7, 8 and 30 have been withdrawn from service and transferred to Plymouth City Bus. Thank you to Deraid Foy for the information. Going over to Nottingham City Transport now and they have repainted South Knots 1 branded E400, 647, YN15EJK into the newest style South Knots livery. This information has been provided kind of by Will Nixon, who has provided this photo of the bus in question. So going back over to Stagecoach and Stagecoach Midlands, Leamington-based ADL E400 X Unibus livery 10033 has been repainted into the new local livery, with sister vehicle 32 to follow shortly. Northampton Scania E300 28624 has been rubbed down for repaint and it's rumoured that this will go into the longer distance livery for the X7 bus service. And E200 37061 has returned to Northampton after being on loan to Nuneaton. Thank you to Nuneaton 777 for that information. Sticking with Stagecoach and Stagecoach Yorkshire Raw Marsh based E200 MMC 26031 is the latest of the standard fabric seats, sort of the older fabric seat before they got the newest style um, leather seating in, um, to be repainted into the local livery. 
Currently, this leaves 2, 6, all 28, 32 and 33 left of the 6 to 5 regged MMCs at Royal Marsh Depot in the old beach ball livery with updates to follow. Thank you to Dern Valley Bus Spotter for the information. So going over to first group and first in Essex, right streetlight 47650 SM15 AEM has transferred to Hadley from Basildon Depot. And alongside this X first Eastern Counties, Dart 42956 WXO6 OMO has transferred to Hadley from Chelmsford with 42895 to replace Dennis Trident's 33095 and 98 both LN51s. Um, that I believe are getting displaced and withdrawn from service. So thank you to Adam the Bus Spotter for the information. So going over to Stagecoach, once again there's a lot of Stagecoach in this episode, and Guildford, where um, Alexander, Dennis Trident, Alex 400, 17736, SK52, USP, um, has an, an older shot, um, oh yeah, this is a list, this is a list, um, so yeah, so 17736, older shot based um, ALX 400 18386, um, and Chichester Dennis Trident um, ALX 400 again 18502, um, alongside B7TLs and 16934, has gone to Ensign Bus for resale. So these have been sold to Ensign Bus, so we're going to sell them on. 18502 was originally from the Neaton and was scrapped due to a catch in fire for the second time in early 2021. Um, so that's probably going to go there for spares. Um, Portsmouth, Dennis Trident, ALX400, 18523, GXO6, DXY has transferred to Basingstoke. So thank you to Gaming Hydraulics for all of that information from Stagecoach in the South region. Going over to National Express, and once again we've got a lot of information from there with all their transfers. And National Express West Midlands fleet update. Um, so Volvo B7 Hourly Urban Eclipses, all Warsaw, Blair, all Warsaw Base now withdrawn, are 1752, 55, 1760, 1762 and 1771. These are withdrawn um, due to the fleet modernising to Euro 6 as these buses are Euro 3. So, um, moving further down on the list, let me find where the rest of it is. So, 2093 um, has transferred, that I believe is B7 Avalee, has transferred from Wolverhampton to Pensnet Depot. 2120 has transferred from Wolverhampton to Warsaw. 2121 has transferred from Wolverhampton to Warsaw as well. 2135 has transferred from Pensnet to Warsaw. 2136 has gone the other way um, from, oh no, it's gone the same way, so Pensnet, Pensnet to Walsall alongside 2137. Other transfers include Wright Eclipse Gemini 2, um, or, yeah, Gemini, um, bodied um, 4476, that has gone from Perry Bar to West Bromwich. 4476, that has also done the same. Um, and then moving further down, Scania Omnicity N230UD 11, um, so 1118. Um, up to 1120 alongside 1191, um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 9 have all been repainted into the new mall livery. Um, oh no, that's the separate information, my apologies. So yeah, the National Express information um, was the Midget Man. The bin I've just mentioned about buses being repainted into the mall bus livery is by Perbeck and Rail Bus Spotter. So that was Scania Omnicity N230 UDs, 118920, 919235. 7, 8 and 9 um, into the Marvel slivery that I should have realised. Uh, my apologies for that. So yeah, the last information, perfect bus and rail spotter and the bit on the transfers, the last bit of transfers was um, the West Bromwich and that was the Midget Man. So thank you to perfect bus and rail spotter and the Midget Man. And that sums up and concludes our um, segment for local fleet news. So yeah, as I do say in the description below, um, if you do have any um, local information, um, be they fleet transfers, withdrawals, repaints, and new buses arrive, do let us know in the description below, and I promise I will try and, and segregate the information off better for next episode. Um, apologies for that bit at the end, but that's all for this episode's local fleet news. So for episodes 45's photo competition, we were themeless and got some epic entries that made it incredibly tricky to choose from. However, we did manage to find a winner, and for this episode, it is Toby Callum, with this lovely Volvo Olympian, sat in front of a traditionally sort of styled railway station. Congratulations for winning. Our runners up as well for this week were Jay Mainline for this shot of a X first, first group, should I say, beat and Billy on a private contract. 
and Scarborough Bus Pro for this action shot of an ex West Midlands B7TL now with Shoreline Sun Cruisers. Don't worry if your photo didn't get picked this time as there were plenty more opportunities to win with episode 46 also being a rollover themeless episode so you can post any of your bus and coach photos from the real life and the virtual world um, and they will be judged um, so anything that you've taken yourself is themeless. So be sure to read the terms and conditions before entering. Good luck and happy snapping. So for tracking buses, this time you join me in the realms of Stoke-on-Trent. For sort of general um, understanding of how Stoke-on-Trent works, if you ever go there for my future videos as well, it's sort of broken down into a couple of areas. Your main two areas, form of where Stoke-on-Trent mainly is, and that is Hanley. So Hanley is, is very much the hub for bus services. However, nearby to Hanley, um, you've sort of got a, a few minor bits and, and bits here and there. So you've got the main Stoke part. Um, again, it's not really that major. Stoke and Trent really consists of Hanley and Hanley sort of city centre. And then you've got Newcastle under Lyme. All of these areas sort of triangul triangulate around most bus services, serve them all. However, as I do say, Hanley is, is very much the place to be when you do visit. So Hanley has a few operators. It's two major bus companies. Our first group, as you can see, with all their different brands. This class is under the first Potteries operation. And D&G Bus, who operate a lot of different liveries and things. Um, and operate a few local services, as well as a few oddball out-of-town routes. So they do operate alongside first group to operate the main arterial services and D&G sort of step in every so often. So it's like the 16, for example, um, although it says like this one's only leaked to Stoke, some 16s also go up to Buxton. Um, so it's a good way to commute from Buxton to Stoke on Trent. So we'll kick off with first group um, without me right clicking. Um, so first group round here, their fleet is very standardised. So they do have ADL and rights products, very modern vehicles. And until very recently, they were running a, a, a large fleet of Transbus E300s that have all now been replaced, if I can find them, there we go, by B7 RLEs. Now, these B7 RLEs, 69160, those of you who recognise the MX Regis, um, have all transferred from Manchester. So if I can find them on the fleet list, this is all the vehicles that you'll see in the local area. And as you can see, they've got quite a large fleet of B7 RLEs. Consisting from 69148 um, all the way down to 74. Obviously, there's a few gaps in the numbers where a few vehicles have either transferred, been withdrawn, um, and some of them have even ended up with Preston bus. And then I believe some of them might have been mentioned earlier in the show. So there is a, a mismatch of them, and as you can see, they have fixed most of them now. So um, there isn't as many issues as they did have. Initially, when they first arrived, they were quite unreliable. And thus why the Transbus E300s survived on a tad longer than intentionally planned. But as you can see now, they've all been replaced um, as they're no longer on the fleet lists here. Quite a few have also ended up in preservation. So, alongside the Eclipses that do take up quite a lot of the fleet, and also to note as well, they don't have any modern ones. They are all the sort of 06, 2006 registered ones. They do also have a few double-deckers that mainly reside on the University Corridor. Now, to give you an idea of the variety of deckers here, you've got your B7TLs um, that consist of a few a au 7s You've also got a few like 32643 three that transferred quite recently from Leicester. And then you've got the odd oddballs like 31782 that is a YN53 um, registered ALX400 that until last year um, was actually based in Doncaster. And was an incredibly lucky survivor, and incredibly lucky um, in the wake that it actually um, was the only one from that batch at Doncaster that ended up being saved. They did have a few other vehicles. Um, I believe they, they, they did transfer another one across, um, although I don't believe that has entered service. I believe it may have run in service for a bit, but has since been withdrawn. And 37182 is actually the last one from that YM53 batch that lasted at Doncaster to still be alive. Um, as the ones that were all still at Doncaster got scrapped. There are a few YM53s still lurking, a few that escaped earlier, like 31780, 31779, all based in Halifax on the school's fleet with First West Yorkshire. Um, but 31782 is the was pretty much is the last surviving 
um, ex Doncaster vehicle um, to still be running that was directly transferred from Doncaster. Alongside those two, though, ALX 400 wise, um, there are three towards 66 and 67. These have arrived, these were native, I believe, to um, the Worcester region and have now transferred up in swap for two B90, our Gemini 2s, that have transferred from South Yorkshire down to um, sort of swap them um, as part of a fleet age thing and a few other things here and there. So these are now waiting to enter service. I believe they might have actually done a bit of service by the looks of it. They have been, yeah, they have been doing a few school contracts and things. Looks like I haven't actually put them directly into public service yet. Um, but they have been doing school contracts and things since they transferred. So going over to D and G and D and G run your standard stuff. There are a few mainly Optair products. Optair Metro City there, an Optair Solo there, um, an Optair Versa. So they run very standard Optair products. They do have a few interesting regs though, if we can try and find one. So they do have a few vehicles and interesting private regs, like this one D and G fifty six bus, a street light. I mean it was previously registered something totally different. Another private reg. Um, but they do have a few interesting ones, and you've got a few older stuff. Although D&G don't have as many older stuff as they used to. They have sort of had quite a cull of older stuff going on to more modern products in recent times. Um, again, you've got this, Private Reg. Um, the, the, the Private Reg is randomly around. It's very much like a Yorkshire Tiger operation, is probably how I'd describe it. Um, where the Private Reg is randomly around. There's random liveries and things here and there. Um, and stuff like that. But they do the job. They do the job. It's like this one. That is Scrags. Um, they are another one of the smaller independent operators. That runs around Hanley. Um, I don't believe they have that many vehicles. As you can see. Um, it's just the two Optair. Three Optair solos. Um, one of the operators that you will see if you do go there. Um, and there's a few that run on contracts and things. That aren't appearing on there. I have been to Hanley in the past. Um, I find that going about 3, 4 in the afternoon, you do see all sorts of random stuff bombing around. But they are busy buses, so if you are planning to sort of sample a few routes, I wouldn't recommend peak time. So, going back to the first group fleet, and it is a lot of Scania's. Um, al alongside the B7R and these, there are other ones with similar rights bodywork, and um, there are Scania's. A mix of modern sort of YNO5 Solars, um, that if you do see them in person, do look a bit tired. You do have, as I say, all your streetlights. And then if I can find one, the ones that have had quite a lot of loving to them in recent times um, are the Omnicities. The, there we go. Now, um, I don't think that's not correctly allocated, as I believe that's the 101. Um, and it's currently done it. It did 101s all day and then went into the 18. But the Omnicities, that have had quite a lot of loving there. They are sort of all six regers. Um, six for yours, and as you can see, they've all been refurbished inside um, with the same seating um, styled at First South Yorkshire now in everything. Um, had USBs put in, um, free Wi Fi, and stuff like that. And most of them have been done, so there's a spare vehicle that is today on the Kingfisher. Then you've got your Naughty Ones for the 101s, then you've got your Leak Link for the 18s, and yeah, they do cross over. There are a few allocations that probably need sorting out, so they don't cross over as much. But the branding on them look absolutely stunning they look next to none amazing they really do and again if you look at this your kingfishers um so you've got three vehicles branded for it yeah they're not consecutive vehicles but again the kingfisher is a very very nice brand i believe the route goes via goes very near to walton towers so it goes to otoxita you see i can pronounce it now for those of you who watch that video i can pronounce it now with a bit of effort. And it's quite a long service. It's one I do wish to sample at some point in the future. And the buses, they are elderly B70Ls, but do look very, very nice in that livery. So yeah, that's pretty much um, Stoke and Trent summed up for you. If you do visit at some point, there are a few bits I haven't sort of covered. Um, there are random liveries. But D&G, um, first group of your main operators. Before I do forget though, um, a Reva Dubob in um, all the way um, sort of from Market Drayton on the Midlands fleet, I believe it is, um, and they do bob in once an hour, um, that looks a bit weird, oh, so long, but they do bob in once an hour on the 64 bus route, um, but you, you won't regularly see them. But yeah, that's it for tracking buses um, this episode, do keep sending in your tracking bus location suggestions, um, and I will be making slowly my way around the UK from the tracking perspective, courtesy of bustimes.org. 
We begin as with many of these simulation sections and bits of the episode in the Coast and Country Bus Simulator by Ima King Slayer, who has been working on Gateshead Interchange. This area of the map recently featured on my AMC Live and More Central Live episode 5, so if you haven't already, do go and check that out um, as it does give an overview of the map and the Gateshead Interchange. Alongside this, work on brands has also been taking place to reflect changes in real life that Go North East are making that are looking really good so far. Moving over to OMSI 2 now, and Leo has been working on some Scarborough themed repaints for vehicles. The screenshots um, shown also show off parts of the new Scarborough Seafront upgrade that Leo is working on that I must say is looking absolutely spectacular and I do look forward to driving on it, hopefully in a future video. And finally, moving back over to Roblox and Citybus123 on behalf of the group and sent in some more teaser screenshots from the new South Pole project in, in the Roblox bus simulator world. The latest progress has been a new extension of the routes to Brookstone. Apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. With some lovely scenery along the way. So that's all for this week's simulation section, but do remember to keep sending in screenshots of your amazing projects so they can be showcased. So that's all for episode 45 of Talking Buses. I really hope you've all enjoyed it. Thank you to my co-hosts for this episode, Edward Fowler and Gaz Doncaster, for doing a superb job as usual. And thank you to everybody who took part in contributing to the local fleet news, the simulation section, and the spectacular photo competition. As I said, do send in more themeless entries. I've extended the concept of it being themeless um, so that we can keep getting some more epic entries. As The, the one for this um, week was incredibly tricky um, to choose from. Do also apologise about my slight kerfuffle at the end of the local fleet news. I'm going to change how I format um, the scripting for the local fleet news um, to ensure that it's a little bit easier so that I don't have that issue in future. So now moving over to the backseat, and this week's backseat is one of my favourite batches of Tridents. Um, I thought I'd choose one from that. Stagecoach East Midlands, Dennis Trident, Plaxton President Bodied, 18052, registered, registered KX53 VNC. Um, very, very nice vehicles, with those 180s, some MX and some sort of KX53s. Um, and this was taken on a round the round Rotherham trip a couple of years ago um, on Route 19. So I do hope you've all enjoyed this episode. I hope you all enjoy the back seat. Do be sure to click that like button so that more people can find the talking bus show and enjoy it like you do. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to the Amma Central YouTube channel for more episodes like this as well as my other real life and virtual transport content. Again, thank you all for watching. Do hope you enjoy the back seat. And I will see you all in the next video, Mick. Goodbye for now. Bye.